Hello and welcome to the 11th round of the 2016 PCC Light Series season here at the Green Valley Motorplex located in Norway, Missouri. Now starting on the pole is James Beverly and Justin King on his outside, as this might actually be the last race that the PCC Light Series runs at this Green Valley Motorplex, which is a right-hand oval, very unique in that way. Uh, there are several tracks that are clamoring for this date, uh, including the uh, tracks in Abbotsford and... Uh, there's also a track in Duluth that are clamoring for this date. Uh, that would be nice to see the PCC Light Series return to one of their traditional stomping grounds in Minnesota. Uh, there are several other tracks. The uh, Los Angeles Maxwell Center, where uh, the Stock Car Super Series just ran their inaugural race, uh, is also looking to uh, take this date. And uh, several others that are uh, submitting bids include a track in Georgia, as well as a track in New Brunswick. So it's going to be very interesting to see if uh, this traditional venue, uh, the Green Valley Motorplex, stays on the calendar. Uh, the PCC Cup Series last ran here in 2011, and the Light Series has been here ever since uh, the series was founded in 2002. So it's going to be interesting to see if this venue stays on the calendar in years to come. And now James Beverly leads the field to the green flag. Justin King gets a bit of a slow start on the outside. And that means that Beverly's going to take advantage and take the lead into turn one, pulling a pretty good gap over uh, the rest of the field there. Justin King on the outside trying to make a move around Zach Meyer. And the 43 is going to get a chance to do so. And King with a huge run down the backstretch uh, using the draft. And James Beverly is going to lead lap one, but I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to hold on. Sam Burkhart, lap two, gets into the wall from about 10th place. He's going to slide all the way back at tapped by JC Carpenter there and go into the inside wall. He's going to lose a bunch of positions sliding back up on the track. Uh, and that's quite a bit of right side damage to the 51 is now Justin King. Lap number four, he's going to make a move down to the bottom and he's going to take the lead, or at least go side by side with James Beverly here going down the back stretch. Uh, James Beverly fighting there on the outside in the 34 car, that's Lambert Motorsports and uh, Petrol Tech Engineering. Uh, Petrol Tech Engineering looking to go back into the Cup Series uh, next season as Justin King takes the lead. And now we've got, looks like Gabriel Messina's in the wall, lap 5. He's going to drop way back in the field. Uh, but Gabriel Messina having a uh, decent run here today as uh, your championship points leader by a wide margin. Sam Burkhardt is running in 15th uh, on lap number 9. This is not quite what we expected. We expect him to be up in the top 10, but... By lap number 11, we've got pack racing here, as this is the lead pack. This is about the first uh, 12 cars or so in the lead draft. Uh, going back and further, we've got the second pack, which has quite a few cars. As you can see, Sam Burkhart in there, the championship leader, has fallen all the way back to uh, below 20th place now. Something's not quite right with that car, as this is uh, the third pack we've got here, and this is about... Uh, 25th and then the last few stragglers who are losing the draft as they go a lap down here uh, very soon and oh we've got four wide four wide's not going to quite work as the Genesis uh, the, the Genesis teammates spin out Greg Maddox there a couple cars involved Sam Burkhart involved uh, oh championship points leaders involved Tiffany Matthews Ron Yave going on board with uh, Sam Burkhart to see what happened here and he's going to try and go low thinks about going high and he's just going to um hit the spinning car of Tiffany Matthews there and get some front end damage as uh, the entire field except for I think Matt Beck brings it down pit road and uh, Beck is going to lead the field on the restart after uh, having not the best start of the race but his uh, tires are a bit worn and as you can see there Kelly Thomas rockets by and there's uh, Dustin Oliver taking the lead now uh, Gabriel Messina also up in the top five after a fantastic pit stop from his crew as uh, Dustin Oliver is going to take the lead there on the bottom and Bluto Belushi is reporting that a tire has gone down on his 24 car. And uh, he's going to bring that car into the pits and lose a lap in the process. Sam Burkhart back in 30th place. And his second place uh, rival in points is actually his teammate who's running up in the top 10 right now. Uh, but he is quite a ways down in points compared to his teammate. But uh, they've currently locked out the top two uh, in points. Uh, looks. Oh, we've got contact between Jeff Fisher and Justin King, and King's going to slide down the track. Uh, well, it was just a two-car incident. That's going to bring out the second caution of the day on lap number 24, uh, about 12 minutes into this 45-minute race. 
as uh, we've got the leaders coming into the pits, and James Beverly's going to lead on the restart once again. Uh, Beverly has run in the light series for a few years now and is getting another shot with uh, Lambert Motorsports to try and make his way back into the Cup Series. After his uh, aborted attempt at a rookie season in 2011, he's been uh, back and forth between uh, Cup and Lights since then. Now, here's a face that you might recognize from the Cup ranks. This is Chris Benson, who uh, his sponsor stuck with him, uh, Norton Exhaust, and he managed to get a ride with AJ Murphy's team. And uh, he's doing pretty well at the moment. He's actually up in the top 10 after qualifying uh, low midfield. So he's been coming up through the field as the day has gone on. Uh, Lenore Scurry has actually done the same. She is currently third in points, and she's running up in the low top 10 right now. I believe she just got past four tenth place by Kelly Thomas, but still a good run by Lenore Scurry, who is really known for performing well on the short ovals. Now we've gone single file up at the front. Uh, this is lap number 37, so we're uh, about 20 minutes into this race, and it looks like James Beverly's making a move on the inside to try and take the lead back from Dustin Oliver, and he's going to do so on the front stretch there with help from Justin King, who pulls low. Uh, Beverly taking the lead, but oh, he's slowing down just a little bit. There's something wrong with the 34. 34 is slow on track, and it uh, looks like... That's Isaac Parsons who's going to get stuck behind as that car is going to stop on track and bring out a caution. As it uh, uh, looks like everyone's going to miss him. Yes, the entire field is going to get by and uh, Beverly would get a push back to the pits. Uh, but the entire field would come into the pits uh, under this caution. Uh, Kelly Thomas would actually stall her car out on pit road and lose several laps in the process. Unfortunate for that 72 car as that team was running up in the top five. As Dustin Oliver takes the lead, and you've got two tail enders there, and Blue Belushi and James Beverly, who didn't bring their car uh, onto the pits, but they're going to get immediately lapped as uh, there he goes, right on by. Dima Van Hall up in second place, and Alex Posington in third. Haven't seen them up front all day, so they're having strong runs now. As we reach the midpoint of this race, as uh, oh no, that's another problem for the Lambert Motorsports cars, as uh, Zach Meyer brings his car into the pits from seventh place, tire gone down on that car as uh, Casey Lester, who's fifth in points, uh, he is arguably a uh, cup-level talent who got uh, stuck in the light series during the series reshuffling uh, between last year and this year, is running up in the top 10. He's having a good run, uh, this 29 car, and he's really had a good run all season. Uh, very strong championship effort. As the 34 has unlapped himself, uh, getting around Alex Posington there as Justin King is trying to make a move for the lead. But at this point, if a caution would come out, James Beverly would be back on the lead lap and be able to contend for the win once again. Uh, so he's really hoping for a caution as uh, Zach Meyer is a bit slow. Oh, we've got a we've got a jam up there, and that's going to be another caution. Justin King pinched in the ball. Alex Posington involved as well as James Beverly is going to get his lap back. Looking at what happened, looked like uh, Zach Meyer got cleared high and. King was there and he pinched him into the wall, Posington involved, and oh my goodness, no brakes from Carter Fitzgerald, what was that? Uh, Maddox gets involved, Scurry gets some damage, so does Constantine, uh, looks like Carpont gets some damage, as uh, King gets that car rolling again, but what was that from Carter Fitzgerald? Uh, just no brakes and plowed right in as Chris Benson, who was, current, who was uh, second place, uh, when that caution came out, does not bring his car into the pits, which means that he will be leading us to the green flag. So Chris Benson, who hasn't been in the light series since 2010, is uh, leading here at Green Valley. And uh, this is going to be really interesting to see because uh, he's worked his way through the field. and He's got one of the faster cars here, as I believe... Oh, we've got a mess in the back there, it looks like, and that's going to bring out a caution... Uh, another caution here, as looks like uh, Kelly Thomas, who was slow on that restart, got put into the wall by Damon Jones, slaps up the track. Josiah Hofacker involved, uh, Dustin Oliver, a couple other cars there. And that's going to take uh, that's going to take Thomas and uh, Hofacker out of the race. Tough break for both of those cars, as uh, once again Chris Benson leads on the restart with just 12 minutes to go. So two-thirds of this race are over. We've got the 964 car there uh, making a move on the inside. I believe that's Daniel Bouchard 
and he's going to take the lead now. So a strong effort from the 964 team and that Genesis Engineering group, who were actually involved in the first caution, uh, getting a push there from Jeff Fisher, who's uh, been consistently up in the top 10 this whole race. Uh, Fisher having a very strong season after it started very flat. And your championship points leader is on pit road, Sam Burkhart. So he's going to take a big hit in the uh, standings here today. Uh, or at least his points total is going to drop quite a bit. Uh, now the 11 car of Patrick O'Hannigan has taken the lead. Um, just a few, uh, just a little over 10 minutes to go at this point. Uh, so Patrick O'Hannigan has uh, been quietly near the front, but this is the first time we've really seen him at the front of the field uh, leading this race. Ron Yave is having a strong run for the Grand Strand Racing Team, who actually fell into relegation after last week. Uh, he's in 11th place with about 10 minutes to go, so a uh, strong run that this team needs to stay afloat and uh, in the series. Now, looks like we've got a battle for the lead here with just uh, about nine or so minutes to go. Uh, Chris Benson making a move on the inside, and Gabriel Messina gonna make it three wide for the lead going into turn number three. Coming out of turn number four, Messina it's going to take the lead there on the inside, driving for the Ekdal team. Uh, he has not shown a lot of speed, but this is uh, arguably a change in form. Uh, taking the lead will do that. Uh, now, James Beverly has actually worked his way back up into the top 10, and he's making a pass here for ninth on Denny Adams, and he's going to complete that pass very easily. Look how fast he's going. Uh, easily the class of the field. Him and Dustin Oliver have been slicing and dicing their way through the field like a like they're stars in a bad racing movie. Jeff Fisher uh, having a strong run. He's going to encounter some lap traffic here. Well, in the lead, Fergal Sheedy's going to take the lead in the 12 car. Actually, no, that 12 car is a lap down. He fell a lap down under one of the cautions. He just unlapped himself, but Gabriel Messina now making a battle for the lead on the inside as uh, with all this lap traffic, that's allowed the top three to get away with uh, Sheedy there as a buffer, and O'Hannigan's going to take the lead. So it's O'Hannigan, Messina, and Benson battling for the lead. Uh, some interesting names that I don't believe we've seen before at the front. Uh, Isaac Parsons is also in fourth place trying to get around Sheedy. They're having another strong run after uh, finishing second at Richmond. Uh, Parsons has turned his season up as... Uh, the circle track racing team has slowly slipped through the standings. They're uh, just about in danger of relegation at this point, but I think that uh, with this strong run, that'll boost them up just a bit above it. O'Hannigan continues to lead uh, just about seven minutes to go as here comes uh, Jeff Fisher, who got trapped behind some lap traffic. He's going to try and make another effort to get back into the top five as Dima Van Hall's made a good effort to get back up into fourth place. Uh, at one point he was second, and I believe this will be his best run of the year thus far if he stays there. Dima Van Hall and the Tony Long uh, team are doing uh, wonders here today. As uh, just a few laps to go, we've got a battle for the lead as we've got some lap traffic here, just three minutes to go. As O'Hannigan and Messina have put a bit of a distance on Benson there, Lapped cars looking to cause a lot of problems for the leaders as now we've got two wide uh, in turn number two, Messina and O'Hannigan. Messina on the inside, but it looks like O'Hannigan's going to get a better run down the back stretch as Messina's going to slot back uh, right behind O'Hannigan, three and four here. And Messina's right there, right on his back bumper. Uh, Messina looking to make a move if he can keep up his momentum and stay with O'Hannigan as we get into the dying portions of this race. is just two minutes to go now as here comes uh, some lap traffic. We've got Matt Tauger and Bluto Belushi. O'Hannigan gets pinched behind him and Messina's gonna take the lead there. Messina rockets ahead as uh, O'Hannigan understandably lays the bumper to the back of Bluto Belushi telling him to get out of the way as he continues to lose time as Messina. Just under two minutes to go here. Uh, working around some lap traffic, but O'Hannigan is flying. He is easily the faster car of the two. As you can see there, he's already cleared those two lapped cars, and it is on for the finish. As uh, here comes O'Hannigan. O'Hannigan making up a lot of ground now. Uh, maybe Messina pushed a bit too hard and wore off his tires, as he has really closed that gap. Look at this. As now, with just two laps to go here, 
as uh, time is about to expire on this race. We've got a huge group of lapped traffic there, and O'Hannigan's going to make a move to the inside as time expires. There will be one more lap to go after this, as uh, there's O'Hannigan on the inside. White flag for the leader, Patrick O'Hannigan. As now, can Messina make any move? He got held up by Denny Adams there, but Messina on the bottom trying to make anything happen, trying to make any sort of uh, challenge occur here, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen as Patrick O'Hannigan into turn number three. Uh, looks like he is going to take it here out of turn number four. Patrick O'Hannigan wins his first race at the Green Valley Motorplex. Taking a look at the results, Jeff Fisher managed to get around Chris Benson in the dying seconds of the race to finish in third, but a very strong effort by Chris Benson to finish in fourth place in his first lights race in over eight years. Hopefully we'll see more of him in the Cup or the Lights series in the future here, uh, later this year. Uh, Demon Van Hall and Isaac Parsons, fifth and sixth, very strong efforts for both of them, and uh, a Herculean effort by James Beverly to finish in seventh place after falling a lap down after breaking down on track. And Dustin Oliver manages to capitalize on his uh, teammate and championship leader, uh, Sam Burkhart, his issues throughout the day. Ryan Pritchard in the 964, strong run for him in ninth place. Casey Lester rounds out the top 10, uh, continuing his championship efforts. DJ Motorsports, 11th and 12th. Matt Beck having a strong run in 13th place. Daniel Bouchard in the 972 and 14th. Fergal Sheedy fell back to 15th, uh, but was a lap down at the end. JC Carpenter, 16th. Ron Yave fell a lap down late in 17th place. Justin King, Trek Tauger in 19th had a very quiet run, and Lucy Nectal Jr. rounds out the top 20. And now looking at the points, Dustin Oliver has managed to cut Sam Burkhart's uh, points lead down to less than one race with Jeff Fisher right behind him, just 12 points back from uh, Oliver. Lester up to fourth place. James Beverly having a strong run this season up in fifth place. Lucy Nectal Jr. in sixth. Matt Beck. Lenore Scurry drops from third to eighth in the points. Justin King in ninth. Damon Jones and Denny Adams seemingly on top of each other, not only in finishing but in points. Greg Maddox in 12th, Parsons, Posington, Dima Van Hall up to 15th place in points, uh, J.F. Davila, who's won two races this year, Patrick O'Hannigan with his win moves up into the top 20, the Genesis Engineering duo in 18th and 20th, and Carter Fitzgerald in 19th, uh, for some reason forgot how to use the brakes today, but is still 19th in points.